What's up everyone, and welcome back to the channel. If you've ever managed multiple computers, worked in IT, or just needed to fix a family member's PC from afar, you know the pain. You're tired of complicated remote setups, driver hassles, and unreliable access. And if a system crashes completely, forget about it. Well, today we're looking at a brand new contender that aims to solve all of that. This is the awesome Smart KVM Q1, a device that claims to be a smarter plug and play remote control solution. The promises here are pretty bold. Ore says this ultra compact KVM, which is smaller than a credit card, gives you full BIOS level control over your machines. That means you can fix blue screens, change settings before the OS even loads, and recover from crashes all remotely. And the best part? There is zero software to install on the computer you're controlling. It works with Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and even Android and iOS devices. They even claim it offers offline remote control as long as the Q1 itself is connected to the internet, the target machine doesn't need to be. For security, it's packing financial grade data encryption with 2048 bit RSA and AES to keep your connections safe. Now, this is a pre order item currently on sale for $59, down from $99, and it's expected to start shipping in November 2025. So, in this video, we're going to unbox it, check out what you get in the package, walk through the setup process, and put it to the test. Can this tiny box really deliver secure, hassle free BIOS level control? for just $59. Well, let's find out. If you're ready, hit that like button and subscribe and let's get unboxing. So in the box, we have the quality control labels and a few leaflets for the Q1. We also have the Q1 device itself, which has a really premium aluminium feel to it. Very premium. It's very lightweight as well. Now, in addition to what we had with the Cat6 cable and the HDMI cable, in the box also comes a adapter. Now, the problem with this is that it's not for my local region, which is in the United Kingdom. However, they were great enough to send along a UK specific adapter for my needs, which just plugs in and connects together and you're good to go. Then we come back to the Q1. Now it has an output power of 12 volts and one amp. It's made of aluminium and some engineered plastic. Its dimensions are 75 by 45.05 by 17 millimeters thick. Now it has a HDMI port, a 100 megabits per second RJ45 port, the USB-C uh, keyboard and mouse port, and the adapter port. Now stacking this together next to the GL KVM, Comet. You'll see that it's substantially smaller in size. It only weighs 63 grams. And some other interesting things about this is that it does, according to the uh, specs, have Bluetooth 5.0 built in. So that will be interesting to see. You'll notice that it has a lot less ports than the GL AVM. Uh, and ultimately, they're both manufactured to a high degree. Both are aluminium. Both have nice frames and both seem functional. But what other specs do these two have side by side? Well, let's have a look at them. Now, it's not all about specifications, but let's go through it. Anyway, the Q1 is at $59 versus its direct competitor, the Comet, which is $89.99. The Q1 does 15 FPS on a maximum resolution of 2560 by 1600 and the Comet 30 FPS at 3840 by 2160 4K. The network connections are at 100 megabits per second RJ45 for the Q1 and one gigabits per second for the Comet. The Q1 has a barrel power adapter and the Comet has USB-C power. So with all the important information out of the way, I think it's about time we get into the setup. Now, when you have the device plugged up to your system, all you want to do is download the awesome remote control app. You can flick through the nice screens to give you a little bit of info on the device and then accept the consumer agreement if you agree with it. And then all you've got to do at the top of the screen is hit the globe icon to make sure that we're in the national, not the Chinese version of the app. You'll then be prompted to authorize this account on your system and bind the device to you. All we've got to do when we log in then is hit the skip button at the top of the screen and then hit the little plus sign at the top right, followed by add smart device. It will then scan and using the Bluetooth built into the UVM, Q1, it will be able to establish a connection. We've just got to hit that QM button there 
and connect to the device which binds that to the account. At this stage, just make sure, unlike me, that your Ethernet cable was correctly plugged into the back of the device and you'll be good to go. At this point, you just need to give your device a nickname and set a secure password so that you can access it later on for remote control purposes. Now, your public IP address will be shown in the app and it will also give you cable status updates such as the HDMI cable and the USB-C cable. Something to point out here is immediately the remote control aspect of the device was not working and for love nor money I couldn't find out why. I, and it turns out the reason for this is simply because I had the power cable plugged in and the USB-C cable. And it transpires that for remote control, you don't plug in the power cable. It gets its power from the USB-C cable acting as its keyboard and mouse. Now, you don't only have to use the mobile app. You can actually download Orson's uh, Windows app as well. So I'll leave all links in the description for you. But essentially, once you've downloaded the Orson remote control app, just start installing it onto your Windows system. One of the good things about this is that it will auto update as well. So it's as simple as clicking a button. And then it will ask you quite a lot about your location. Now, I insist on saying, no, I don't want this, but every now and then it does pop back up. Okay, so at this point, we're just going to run this upgrade. So we're rocking the latest version. And then we're going to go to device list. And at the top of the screen here, you can see China mainland. We're going to switch that to global, at which point we can select continue with browser. Now you might get a pop up on the screen that says, um, do you allow this application to proceed? Just click the little check box and then OK. And we'll pop our credentials in here and just confirm authorization to our account. It will then log into the app for you via the web browser. At which point your devices will show up. Now we've already bind mounted this uh, in the app, so we're good to go with that. We click desktop and then put in the independent password that we created earlier on. Uh, and if you're getting no video signal, it could be that there's a, a screensaver on. So click the mouse a few times on the keyboard just to see if that'll come through. If not, just double check your system's not gone to sleep. Uh, and there we go. It's as simple as that. This is uh, the interface. You can see it's pretty decent. So it's running the resolution of 1920 by 1080p. Uh, and we can access Windows pretty pleasantly. At the top of the screen here, we do have some options such as full screen or not, local mouse immersive mode. Um, it does have AI remote control reports as well, which is a VIP feature. We can record, do screenshots, play uh, the remote sound device, which can apparently have an effect on its bandwidth. Uh, and then under desktop mode, we've got original ratio, adaptive, how we're optimizing this for games or just image and then a few different rendering modes and hardware decoding as well which we always like hardware decoding so simple as that this is the sun ray q1 remote kvm simple as that easy to put together when you know how i hope you've enjoyed the video and i'll catch you in the next one